could be better than harvesting crops without having to dig the soil or sow seeds every year? Growing edible perennials is as close as you can get to do-nothing gardening. Once established, they come back year after year and produce abundant harvests with very little effort. Just think of all the chores required to grow annuals. Every year we have to save, buy, or otherwise acquire and store seeds. For cold-sensitive crops like tomatoes and peppers, we have to start them in the grow room, nurture them for several weeks there, water them, fight off fungus gnats, and adjust the lights as they grow. Then before being transplanted into the garden, they have to be hardened off gradually outside over the course of several days. Finally, we have to transplant them into the garden and hope that an unexpected cold snap doesn't wipe them out. The many annuals are well worth the effort and we'll continue to grow them. We'll get closer to our ideal of a do-nothing garden by planting more and more perennials over time and fewer annuals. At the moment, we have over 30 edible perennials in the garden. Everything from blackberries and strawberries to good King Henry and sorrel to oregano and sage. Once established, most perennials require less work than annuals. Their deeper roots are better able to access nutrients and moisture, so they require less fertilizer and water. In most cases, a yearly application of compost and mulch provides all the nutrients they need. And because the soil is mulched and undisturbed, fewer weeds emerge and mycorrhizal fungi thrive, reducing weeding and fertilization requirements. Another advantage is that many edible perennials have long growing seasons. French sorrel is one of the first plants to emerge in the spring and we harvest red vein sorrel and Egyptian walking onions most of the year, even during much of the winter under protection. Similarly, we can harvest sunchokes in the fall, winter, and spring, except when the ground is frozen. Last year we added six new perennials that are hardy here in Zone 5. French sorrel, Good King Henry, sunchokes, asparagus, two pawpaw trees, and an Asian pear tree. This year we'll add three more that are hardy in Zone 5 plus one that's hardy to zone six, but may survive the winter here under protection. Let's start with two perennials that are also cold hardy. Minutina is an herb that can produce all winter long under protection here in zone five. Its leaves are eaten as greens in salads. Sylvetta arugula is a perennial arugula in zones five to nine. We plan to grow Minutina and Sylvetta arugula in the hoop house I'm building later this year. Lovage is an herb that's perennial in zones four to nine and produces stalks similar to celery and leaves that can be used like parsley. Finally, we started seeds for an artichoke that is hardy to zone six, but we hope to grow it here in zone five under the protection of cold frames and mulch. As we continue to plant more and more edible perennials, we hope to get closer to our ideal of a do-nothing garden. If you'd like to learn more about growing perennial vegetables, please see the link below in the description to the global inventory of perennial vegetables. This document contains lists of perennial vegetables that can be grown all over the world. I've also provided a list of all the edible perennials we're currently growing in the garden, as well as links to where we bought the seeds for the new ones we're adding this year. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. <music>